Good day, I'm Jarpi van der Westhuizen, General Manager of SA Stadtboek, and I would like to narrate the portion of dairy cattle breeding uh, part of TLR 420, um, we, uh, under the authorship of Dr. Bernice Mostert. So um, we'll be dealing with the, the part, like I said, uh, dairy cattle breeding uh, in livestock breeding, TLR 420. Dairy cattle breeding deals with a multitude of traits. Uh, the obvious ones that uh, come to mind would be those traits that influence production. Uh, and the obvious one there would be milk production. So for many, many years, um, dairy cows has been um, selected for higher milk production. But as time goes on and the uses of milk um, for different reasons uh, or uh, uses changes over time. Uh, butter fat became important and obviously protein in terms of cheese making um, and also related to those traits would be the percentage butter fat in milk as well as the percentage protein. So uh, the first group then would be uh, the production traits. But there are also a multitude of so-called secondary traits uh, that um, is as important as the production traits in terms of the profitability of dairy production. These, uh, the first group would then be the other health traits because of the huge erosion um, in, dairy, in dairy herds due to, uh, for health reasons. Uh, and the obvious one that's been used in South Africa for, uh, for genetic evaluation is somatic cell score. As a good indication, of the ability of a dairy cow uh, to withstand the onslaught of, of um, mechanisms that, that uh, would negatively affect other health. The second group of traits uh, obviously would be the fertility traits uh, as is known that fertility uh, creates the onset of a new lactation and obviously that, that and obviously also uh, a calf that uh, increases the value of the herd um, in terms of progeny of uh, the dairy cows in the herd. So uh, a very important group of traits then, fertility traits. Then in the last few years, um, traits that um, deal with functional herd life or longevity has become um, uh, increasingly important in terms of the profitability in dairy herds. Uh, it's all to do with uh, voluntary versus involuntary culling. Uh, involuntary culling refers to um, those animals that cull themselves, if you can call it that, from the herd due to um, ill health or um, low fertility or other reasons. And uh, longevity breeding values then uh, look after uh, or addresses the problem uh, where animals have a, a shorter functional herd life. Then persistency in milk production, and this, this deals with the, with the slope, especially in the last two thirds of the lactation curve. Uh, you can have a high peak in lactation, and if you have a very st steep decline in production, um, because the, um, the area under the lactation curve gives you the total milk production, it means a, a sharp decline after the, the peak production uh, means lower milk production in the, the latter half or latter two thirds of um, the lactation curve. And then uh, very important in the last many years is so-called linear type traits. Uh, in the South African populations, there are 18 Jersey uh, linear type traits and it's, it's also sometimes called functional type traits because it deals with the function of the animal, walkability, the uh, um, stability in terms of the animal in the herd, uh, functional herd life, and so forth, and 17 uh, such traits uh, with Holsteins uh, that's being dealt with. So generally spoken, if, if one drafts up uh, breeding objectives, uh, whether it's uh, any production animal, whether it's beef cattle, dairy cattle, uh, small stock or pigs or what, or chickens, um, the, the ultimate objective in breeding is to increase profit. So, um, and, and profit has two main elements. The, the, the one element is output, uh, more product and obviously uh, price of product. 
and also to decrease input because that's the other the other half uh, of the equation in terms of profit so in terms of output one would then um, naturally would like to increase your production whether it's milk uh, butter fat in in terms of kilogram or yields and protein yields because of the uh, also because of the payment system of milk uh, that will favor milk with higher butter fat and protein uh, percentages in terms of uh, input uh, it, you should select for cows that will last like I said um, uh, the, the rather voluntary culling than involuntary culling and also your more fertile animals and animals that are less prone uh, to disease especially uh, good uh, must have good other other health as well okay so in, in essence uh, in terms of selection production traits will be uh, more important uh, but um, fertility selection for higher fertility and one also uh, need to talk about the progeny of bulls um, high fertility of daughters will be very important the onset of lactation and also to have re at regular intervals have carvings uh, so that your return on investment in terms of your herd uh, will also increase in the in the same vein but also then uh, to select for lower somatic cell score um, we know that um, there is no it's not a, a normal distribution it's a logarithmic uh, distribution somatic cell score so by selecting for lower somatic cell scores uh, you're discriminating against those very high outliers uh, with very extremely high uh, somatic cell scores um, and that will lead to uh, better other health and also to directly select for longevity uh, or functional herd life and this this obviously have high economic benefits in selecting dairy cows and then the linear type traits are mostly um, geared towards or, or constituted so that uh, when you select for a group of uh, linear type traits sometimes a sub um, uh, um, intermediate optimum uh, for, for certain traits then uh, you will also inadvertently select for cows that will last in the herd this then lead us to the, 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 the principle that needs to be used so that one can include a lot of different traits and properties of animals uh, where breeding values blood breeding values are available for to include them all in, a, in single uh, ERTs or selection indices uh, that takes the uh, additive variance differences in additive variance the covariance amongst those traits and obviously the economic values in consideration into a selection index so um, to, to combine uh, a selection for all these EBVs into a single uh, value they are weighted uh, according to the economic value but also the variance covariance structures of those traits uh, because you always will accept or uh, expect basically that there will be correlated responses when you select for one trait um, there will be correlated responses for all the other traits and that needs to be considered also in drafting a um, selection index so all the all the traits that are then considered in a selection index um, uh, a so-called total index um, has an economic value or a monetary value a rand value in the case of South Africa uh, they also sometimes consist of some sub indices so um, where there's a specific need like for example uh, other health for example or just all the production traits you can have sub indices that will address those uh, specific needs as well but eventually they will end up in a in a total uh, index that with a monetary value okay if we if we then talk about selection indices in in dairy cattle uh, the first one uh, most important one that's an overarching one and a more general selection index is the so-called logics merit, merit index in south africa uh, that some of the the, the farmers will use um, and there's there's quite a, uh, a an emphasis on protein because most of the milk buyers um, has an emphasis on protein due to the fact that you um, uh, milk more richer in protein will result in um, more cheese or a higher cheese yield 
uh, for that milk. So, um, but we'll we'll uh, uh, put more emphasis on on what actually goes into the logic merit index. It's not just protein; it's all these uh, other production traits, as well as the secondary traits. Uh, that's equally important. Then the other one that um, that also uh, sometimes depending on uh, what type of product is being delivered and what the milk buyer wants is the so-called fluid milk index uh, where more emphasis is put on milk so if the milk buyer um, is selling fluid milk or in the fluid market and not using milk uh, for, for other purposes such as butter or cheese um, then, uh, then the fluid milk index can be more favorable to certain producers and then all these indices have the sub indices uh, that that goes with it uh, the protein sub index the other health sub index the fertility index the longevity or functional herd life index uh, the other index which is which is to do with other health uh, lower disease uh, prevalence uh, frame size frame size has a direct bearing on 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 uh, efficiency of production large framed animals in certain production systems, especially where there's a limitation on, on feed, quality and quantity uh, can have a big influence. And then feed and legs that, that shows a, a marked um, correlation with uh, functional herd life uh, of uh, dairy cattle. So, um, and all these indices are expressed uh, relative to the base cows uh, born in 2010, so that you have a reference, uh, a reference uh, to work from uh, when selecting these animals or comparing these animals uh, amongst the, uh, the others, the other animals that's available as, um, as selection candidates. This, this is uh, one of the indices of the, uh, importance is the one that the SA Jersey uh, Society uses. They call it the Jersey SA Init. Um, and the SA Inet index, and this is all the traits and, and properties that um, make, makes up the um, SA Inet. And you will see ultimately the functional type index, which is then a sub index, uh, counts 20% of the SA Inet. Production index, and you, here you can see the kilograms of production um, EBVs will go into the production index, that, that makes up 40%. The functional other index, and here you can see somatic cell count uh, score is in there, and all some some of the linear type traits related to longevity and 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 uh, and uh, other health uh, also counts, and that counts 10 percent. The reproduction index 20 percent, very important calving interval, and then functional herd life that uh, uh, counts up to 10%. So you will see that in the olden days, before uh, the secondary uh, traits became so important in terms of profitability, uh, just about all animals would have been selected for production. And nowadays production will make up only 40% of the total selection index. But it's also then possible for any farmer making decisions to use these sub indices when there's a problem or a rectification in a herd to maybe select bulls, uh, let's say on functional other or reproduction uh, that can rectify specific, specific conditions uh, in a herd. So this, this is a good, good example then of a very well balanced selection index. And you will also see some of the traits like rear other birth have no bearing on, uh, on any uh, um, uh, profitability. And that's why you have such a zero value on certain traits with a height uh, as well in the case of, of Jersey cattle. You will also see that inside the 40% that the production index counts in the total uh, selection index, uh, milk only, uh, milk kilograms of milk only accounts for 10%, protein 50% and butter fit 40%. So of the 40%, only 10% of the 40% will be kilograms of milk. We also know that there is a positive genetic correlation between kilograms of protein and kilograms of milk. So your correlated response by selecting for protein kilograms will, will also benefit milk. So that uh, even though there is a low value um, percentage wise on milk, the uh, selection for protein and butterfat will also push up uh, the correlated response. 
uh, of milk as well. Then uh, for those Jersey farmers um, being paid in terms of uh, fluid milk, uh, drinking milk, if you can call it that, you will see there's a there's a or a higher uh, emphasis on on um, production, not just 40%, but an extra 5%, and obviously then lower lower values on the on the other traits. But there's still uh, some value emphasis put on functional other uh, other health. That's it, reproduction, longevity, and functional type. But but a little bit more emphasis on on production as well. So of the 45%, you will see that there's a higher emphasis on milk production, not just 10% uh, as it was uh, in the in the SAE net, uh, uh, but still um, without, um, like I said, uh, still keeping some of the emphasis on the components of of, uh, of milk protein and butter fat. Then uh, some of the uh, um, Breeders uh, of dairy cattle are um, basically in areas where they, they get an extra um, advantage in terms of, of cheese yield. And in, in that case, you will see that uh, very interesting. Uh, so the uh, cheese yield index, uh, the production index still makes up 45%, but all of a sudden there's a negative value on milk, kilograms milk with uh, positive values on the components of milk, um, uh, especially on, on protein. So you can see there's a 60-40 um, ratio uh, uh, in terms of protein and, and butter fat with a negative value. That means in terms of the correlated responses that the percentage of protein and the percentage of butter fat will, will increase in, in, in this case if you use this type of uh, selection index. So uh, this is just to emphasize what I've just said. So in terms of the 45% um, contribution in the production index of the cheese yield index, uh, overall index, um, there's a negative 40 on, 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 on milk uh, and then a 60-40 in, in terms of protein and butter fat. So that will favor milk that will uh, render a higher yield in terms of um, of, of, of um, cheese uh, cheese production. A similar index is being apply, applied for the Holstein in South Africa, the HSI, the Holstein Selection Index. And just for interest sake, there's a 13% there's a um, um, uh, contribution uh, in terms of uh, carving interval or uh, intercarving period. Somatic cell counts 5%, herd life 10%, feed on legs 6%, other health 11%, then there's a small one on angularity, that's uh, one of the linear type trait scores, uh, a combined sub-index of type, uh, several type traits 8%, uh, there's an efficiency index which is, is yield um, in terms, terms of uh, maintenance of the animals and then you see there's a 21% um, uh, pressure on or percentage on protein and a 70% on butter fat. These are kilograms. So that also obviously in terms of um, correlated response will be have a positive correlate response on milk production. So although milk has, has a zero percent contribution, the correlated response from butter fat and protein will uh, inevitably lead to a positive uh, value on milk production because of the expected correlated response uh, for that. Okay, so these are then the, the, the most important selection indices in the dairy industry in South Africa. Remember all these traits and properties that are included in the selection index are the EBVs. It's BLAP EBVs being used in the selection indices and it's not based on phenotype. It's based on the BLAP EBVs uh, and it's based on um, multiple trait models, so the correlated cor the genetic correlations are also taken in, in consideration in uh, these EBVs. What are the disadvantages of using a selection index? Just This is just general. Um, it might happen sometimes that uh, if an animal has an extreme good EBV for certain traits, it might so-called hide less desirable EBVs for other traits. So if an animal is, let's say, two or three standard deviation above the mean for the breed, 
for certain um, traits or the EBVs for certain traits, uh, but uh, uh, poor in, in certain other traits, those extreme values might uh, uh, mask the total value in terms of the uh, overall selection index. So um, the, ge the genetic profile in top animals might therefore differ. So you might have two animals with this, the same selection index or very close selection indices, um, but uh, they derived at that value differently. Uh, due to certain contributing uh, traits to the selection index. So this is this is then an example of five cows with a very similar uh, uh, logix merit index LMI. Uh, you will see um, these are expressed in terms of, of kilograms or rand uh, monetary value and they are very close. Uh, and you will see that, let's look at cow one, for example, she outshines all the others uh, for production, 4,282 kilograms um, relative to the base here. Uh, but you'll see for other health, she's the poorest. But due to this high value, she and her fertility is also not um, as hot as the others. Uh, uh, lower herd life compared to cow two. Uh, but you see she, she comes out tops in terms of the logic merit index or the LMI due to this high production value on this side. So um, it's all, all then a balance, although these animals are very close. If you have um, uh, other health problems in your herd, you will certainly not use, if this was a bull and you have to select, you will not use this bull. And if you have fertility problems, you will also not use this bull and would rather uh, look at cow, um, a bull or a cow um, in the region of, of cow three uh, for that. Also longer herd life in this case for cow two. So uh, it's, all, um, it's all therefore very important that not just to look at the, um, the ultimate selection index, but also to look, look at the sub uh, indices when, uh, when selecting uh, breeding animals in a herd. Okay, this has been said, always consider individual EBVs or a group of EBVs in terms of a sub-index before a final selection uh, has been made. Just a few words on genomic selection. Uh, there is, uh, the um, genotypes are also now being included for the three uh, major dairy breeds in South Africa, namely the Holstein, the Jersey and the Ayrshire. So uh, GBLAB is, is available for these three breeds. Um, and uh, so um, this genomic information is then being used in the prediction of uh, genetic values. Uh, this obviously has a si significant improvement in reliability of uh, the estimation of, of breeding values, especially for young animals uh, without uh, phenotypes being recorded yet within their contemporary groups. Uh, and that also then lead to a much ac more accurate selection of animals uh, at a very young age of those animals. Just a quick word on, on the comparison of breeding values uh, uh, in terms of different populations. Um, all, we, all, we know that all those animals included in a uh, blood um, run or where, where all the, where the pedigrees and phenotype, phenotypes are being used in a, in a blood EBV um, can be compared, uh, but it's not possible to compare animals across breeds. So a plus 200 kilogram of a Holstein is not comparable to a plus 200 kilogram of, let's say, an Asia or a Jersey uh, cow. But due to the fact that those populations are being evaluated separately in the blood runs, um, and therefore uh, it's not comparable. The same is true for, uh, for animals in different populations, even if it's the same breed, it means that Overseas animals, that's animals, uh, in, let's say in the USA or Canada, if, if it's Holsteins on that side, cannot be compared to the, the population of South Africa uh, directly compared uh, because they uh, have the different um, models being uh, utilized in the breeding value prediction. The genetic levels of those animals are dif different um, and the genetic parameters, obviously, because of that. There are differences sometimes in base year definitions, 
the units of measurements the, in the USA, it's still it's pounds are still being used, um, and also the expression. It, are these exp, uh, the expression in monetary terms? Uh, are the are the expressions in terms of the uh, measurement um, the uh, the way the measurements are being done, or are they uh, on an index basis uh, compared? So, uh, a Holstein animal in the USA with a plus 500 pounds uh, would obviously not be comparable with, let's say, a plus 220 kilogram um, animal in South Africa due to the due to all these factors being different for the two uh, countries. So how do we overcome this uh, this comparison? The, the very important way to overcome this is to take play or to take uh, be part of the so-called MACE, multiple across-country evaluations, and also GMACE, the genomic uh, um, uh, MACE, uh, a service offered by uh, Interbull. Interbull is a subcommittee of the International Committee for Animal Recording, or ICAR. Uh, Interbull is situated in Uppsala in Sweden and uh, Interbull basically then uses uh, the regressions amongst uh, or the genetic correlations amongst countries uh, participating in this to provide uh, all breeding values or EBVs on the basis of the participating countries. So that means that if there are adequate linkages across countries, so that would be both be with, uh, um, with progeny in more than one country, um, it's possible then to convert the uh, genetic evaluations of any country to the base of uh, another participating country. So the genetic values of a bull, let's say in the USA or in Canada or in, in France or in the UK, can then directly be um, related on a South African scale and compared to our cow population and, and our locally bred uh, bulls in South Africa. That's the only way that this comparison can take place uh, currently um, and not by just utilizing the breeding values are they being, as they are being presented in the uh, country of origin. The, one of the other reasons or some of the other things then taken in consideration with mace or g mace breeding values is GYE or genotype by environment, uh, in the environmental interactions among these countries. Um, and then every country gets its own set of g mace or mace EBVs and that those uh, values are then directly comparable to the logic smoke uh, EBVs in South Africa. Um, and it makes it possible for local breeders to know the foreign breeds uh, bull's uh, genetic uh, values compared to the genetic level of his own, her, her own herd in South Africa. So this is then uh, an overview of uh, dairy uh, breeding in, in South Africa um, as part of the TLR 420 uh, as a module of TLR 420. I thank you very much.